I want to show you how to export your raw force time data from the Hawking Cloud. First you want to go up here, select the menu, go to manage, go up here, type in the athlete's name. Once you click on the athlete and you have counter movement jump or whichever other test you want to pull from, you just go down here and select the test that you want to look at. I want to select this one here. So here's our jump and all the computed metrics here on the left. Um, you can just scroll down a little bit here, down in the bottom left, there'll be an export function. Go up here to the drop down and you can pull the calculations, the calculations with comparisons, um, the force time data, the velocity time data, or the power time data. We're going to go ahead and look at force time data for this. Go ahead and click export. Here it'll pull into an Excel file. Just go ahead and open this up. Pull this down so you can see. All right. And here you have your time. You have your total left force. So that's the force that's going in the left plate only. Then you have your right force. Again, the force is going in the right plate only. And then your combined force. Let's go ahead and delete these here. Um, if you want to compute the force and the time, or if you want to look at that force time curve, simply just highlight this here, go to insert, pull this down so you can see it, insert, you want to select a scatter chart here, and then it'll plot that force time data for you. I'll go ahead and go to the left here and show you what one looks like that's cleaned up. Um, I've made this one a little bigger just so you can see. It's the same data that it pulled from. Um, I've labeled force here on the left and then time right here. As you can see, this is the quiet phase. It's that period of at least one second. Um, this one's close to 1 1.5 seconds of quiet standing. Um, this is just how much the athlete weighs when they're completely still. You want this line to be completely flat or, or the best athlete can stand still. Um, that'll give you an accurate measure of how much they're weighing or how much they weigh with any other implement they have in their hands. Maybe a kettlebell, a barbell on their back, whatever it may be. Um, you can follow this trace. As soon as it starts dropping force, which is that uh, 743 there, so that's in newtons, so that'd be right below their resting system mass on the plates. So this is where they're unweighting. You can find it over here on the left if you go down and uh, find this timestamp, and then also look at system weight as you're going down to find that point. Um, when it gets to the bottom here, this is when they start actively pushing back up. This breaking portion here begins when system weight returns back to that previous 1.5 or 1 to 1.5 second point. So now we have our breaking area. And this goes all the way to the top. This would be the red highlighted in the, the software. And then after this point, we have uh, the athlete is at the bottom of that squat and the counter movement. And now they're going to push and, and take off at this point here. Um, so right here all the way back to system weight is that propulsive phase. And that's the green shaded area in the graph um, on the software. At this point, the athlete is now completely off the force plate. So that's why it's reading a zero here. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of wiggle depending on what surface you're jumping on. Um, but this is essentially zero here. Um, and then when they come back into contact with the force play, that's when you get this big spike. And this landing force is usually um, always higher than their, their uh, peak force that they produce in the counter movement jump. Um, and then you can get a, a time to stabilization here if you have the athlete staying on the force plate after landing for a little while.